through polymerization. So we've already seen a couple proteins like the TUS protein and cytochrome C. Here's three more, wildly different size and shape. They're all fairly big in terms of molecular weight. You can see individual atoms here. These are huge molecules, but they're all built the same way. The construction of this one is done the same way as that one. It's just a question of which monomers you link together into the polymer. So a protein is built out of 20 amino acids. We show them like beads on a string, asparagine, glycine, phenylalanine, glutamic acid. What's not shown here, it's implied that there's strong covalent bonds linking these together. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a new protein, you just link together whatever amino acids you need in a particular sequence that will kind of on its own, to look ahead, that will on its own fold these classic shapes like the spring structure we saw inside from C, or sheep structures. Using weak bonds, they form these structures and fold into a characteristic shape. The backbone is covalent linkages between the amino acids. So to make all proteins, you, we have a, a workbench, it's called a ribosome. All it does is link amino acids together covalently. It gets orders through from the DNA to make different ones with different sequences, but the construction mechanism for all proteins involves making this peptide bond, as it's called, between the amino acids. So you can build ever more complex proteins. The production assembly methodology is all the same. So I don't know if 